Hey, what's up, Dave here. And in this quick video, I'm going to show you how you can autocorrect text anywhere on your Mac using AI. So here's an example. I'm inside Gmail. Here's some text with some errors. I select it, hit a keyboard shortcut, and it will autocorrect it. But I can do the same thing in, for example, Apple Notes. Come in here, select it, hit the keyboard shortcut, and it will correct the text, as you can see. And the same will work in ClickUp here and every other app on my Mac that I can use. And this is literally one of my favorite utilities for AI right now, because it solves the problem of having to copy and paste between different AI tools like ChatGPT or some apps have AI built within them, some not, some charge for it. This solves that problem and you can use it everywhere. And it's a custom automation or workflow that I built using Alfred. And I'm going to show you how you can set it up, even if you're not technical. All right, so all of the instructions are here on this GitHub repository, which I will also link in the description, but I'm going to walk you through it step by step so you can also visually see what this looks like. And like I've said, even if you're not technical, I'm going to make this really simple because if you have some coding experience, you can probably read this documentation and you'll figure it out. But if you're completely new, have never written a single line of code, something things might be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but you can probably set this up in about 15 minutes or so. And in order to follow along, you first of all need a Python 3 installation on your MacBook, which we are going to install via the command line tools. Very easy, I will show you how to do this. We just have to run these two commands. And then next to that, we also need Alfred, which is also free to download. So you can uh, have a look at Alfred over here. It's one of my favorite productivity tools for Mac. You can do a lot of things with it, and we are going to utilize the workflows within Alfred. Alfred. So that is what you need. And in order to do so, you need the Alfred power pack. So disclaimer, this is a one-time purchase that you have to make. So a single license is currently uh, 34 pounds. And this will give you the Alfred power pack that you need in order to do this. And then finally, you need an API key from a large language model provider. And I recommend either OpenAI or Entropic. All right, so let's first look at how to install Python via the command line tools, and then we'll get into the other requirements. And it's important to follow these steps, even if you already have Python installed, because Alfred, the tool that we'll be using, uses this version of Python and otherwise you'll run into some issues. But it's very straightforward. We have to just run two commands in the terminal. So you can come over here and uh, copy this or just select it and then open up a terminal. So here I have a terminal over here. And what I can do is I can just paste that in here. So that is Xcode select install and hit enter. Now, I'm not going to run this because I've already installed it. But what this will do, it is uh, it will download a bunch of resources from Apple to enhance the terminal experience for developers. So it's just going to download a whole bunch of tools in the background. And when you install these command line tools, it also installs a Python 3 version on your system. And then the final step that we have to do is pip install the request library in here, which we're going to use to make a connection with OpenAI. So same thing, after running this command, just paste in the following over here, hit enter, and that will pip install the request library. All right, so that's how you get Python 3 up and running. And then for the other requirements, you can just follow the links in here. So you can just download Alfred, install it, very straightforward. Then uh, the power pack, you can buy it over here and activate it. And then a large language model provider. So I'm going to show you how you can do this for OpenAI. And here you can just create a new secret key. Let's call this test, for example, and create the key. And then here you can see, I will copy this and use this in, ex in this example. I will remove it afterwards. This is a key you should keep secret. So that's everything you need to get started. So then once that is up and running and you have Alfred installed as well. So let me open up the Alfred preferences. And now next, we're going to follow these steps over here. So we can either do this with Claude from Entropic or OpenAI. I'm going to use OpenAI in this example. And we're going to scroll up and come over here to the OpenAI Spell Fixer Alfred workflow. And you can download this file by clicking here on this download raw file. So this will then go to your downloads. Then we can come back and we can double click it to import the file into Alfred. So I can, for example, come in here just double click it and then this window in Alfred will open up if you're running it. So here you can see a short description of what it's doing. You can give it a category of productivity, but this doesn't really matter. And then here in the lower corner, you can hit install. So now 
Again, you should have the power pack uh, enabled by this because that allows you to utilize the workflows. You see the OpenAI spell fixer workflow over here. So I also have already some other workflows in here, but if you're new to Alfred, you should only see this one. And it's a very simple workflow. It contains of three steps that we are now going to configure. So we can come back to the installation steps and we're going to set the hotkey. So we come over to this preference step and we click on hotkey, we double click it, and then we click inside this uh, text field over here that says hotkey. And now we have to fill in our uh, key combination. So what I like to use, but this is personally up to you, I on my Mac use option and a backslash. So that's the one that I use. It works and it doesn't interfere with any of my other uh, settings that I have across uh, all of my apps. So this works for me and I'm going to hit save. So that's step number two. And now we are going to update an environment variable where we are going to plug in our OpenAI API key. So this is the one that we generated over here. So this was the test. And we are going to come in here and go to the top right corner and click on this little X button over here. And in here you have three tabs and you also have environment variables that you can see. So you can see the environment variable OpenAI API key. So I'm now going to click in here, double click, and then paste that OpenAI key in here, and then hit save. So now the application has access to our secret key. Now let's come back to the setup over here, and you can do the same thing for the Entropic API key if you use Entropic. And now the last steps, steps four and five, is we're going to quickly check the Python script and make sure the correct Python version is selected. So bear with me if you're not technical, this is not as, as complex as it sounds. All we're going to do is click on this middle uh, button over here and we're going to check two things. So first of all, we have the language and here you should select Python. So by default, this should load correctly, but you can click in here and based on your installation, you might have something different here, but it should point to something with Python 3. So make sure that is selected. And then what else we can do over here is we can have a look at the code that, that is executing behind the scenes. And even if you're not technical, just putting this into, for example, ChatGPT or reading through it, uh, could help you to better understand this because you can also change this. Because essentially what we're doing here is we're loading some parameters and that is first of all the API key that we're using so we can connect with your account. We're also um, loading a model which I am defaulting to GPT-40 Mini. So this is currently a, a very small and cheap model from OpenAI that works really well for this use case because it's really fast and snappy. And when we hit the shortcut on our keyboard, it's almost instantly uh, instant to, to correct the text. But you can change this to any model that you like, also going into the future when OpenAI releases new models. Then here you can see a system prompt. And this is essentially what we tell ChatGPT or the AI model to do with our text. So make sure you or make sure you can read through this and maybe tweak some things, maybe tweak some some stylization or some certain things that you like. This is a very straightforward prompt that works out of the box, but you can extend it. Then here you can basically ignore all of this because this is where we are going to make an API call to OpenAI to process all of this. But for you technical people, you can look into this, what's, what's going on over here, but it's pretty straightforward. All right, and I'm showing you this because if you understand this, you can very easily, for example, create a copy of this workflow and create an entirely different use case that's also relevant for the work that you do on a daily basis. So for example, you have a certain type of messages or emails that you often have to write. You can come in here and change that in here as well. And that's literally all you have to do. So now this should be working. So that is the final step over here. And here's an, an instruction on how to use it, but we already saw that in the email, right? You should now be able to select some text hit the shortcut, in my case, uh, case option with backslash, and it should correct it. So quickly again, final for some context on what is happening behind the scenes. With Alfred, because it has access to the system, you can see the argument over here, and we're taking a selection in the Mac OS operating system. So that's why we have to create the selection first. We select the text, and then this is the starting point. So we hit the hotkey, and it takes that selection. So it now has access to that text. 
Then what we do in the script over here is the code over here. We take those system arguments, which are um, sequentially put through the workflow via Alfred. So now that text that we selected, this text becomes available to the script and we can send it to OpenAI. And OpenAI will send it back to us in the corrected format. And then finally, what we do is we take that corrected text and we paste it to the frontmost app. And because of this setting, automatically paste to the frontmost app, it works anywhere on your Mac. Now, the only thing to note is that once you do hit the shortcut, you don't have to uh, place your cursor somewhere else. So let me show you what happens if you do otherwise, because it pastes to the location where your cursor is. So if you, for example, select this, hit uh, option backslash, and then immediately click over here in the recipient, you can see it pastes over here. So that's the only thing that you have to keep in mind. But other than that, this is how you set it up and how you can autocorrect text anywhere on your Mac. And now if after watching this video, you got even more excited about using AI and increasing your productivity, then I highly recommend to check out ClickUp, which was also kind enough to sponsor this video. And I've personally been using ClickUp for the past one and a half year or so to run my entire business. We use it for everything. We use it to manage our projects. We use it to manage our documents as well as for YouTube, for clients, for documentation. Within our projects, we can create nice timelines and overview and even for our engineering projects, projects, we can link it up to, to GitHub and create automations through that. So it's really one app to bring everything together. So no more jumping around between different apps. And that's really why I love to click up so much, because if you're anything like me, juggling all your tasks, projects and documents can, can be a real headache nowadays. And I've tried all the other apps like Notion, Trello or Linear or Jira, but to me, there was always something missing. And for me, ClickUp just like made sense to how it's structured and how we can bring everything together. So if you're looking to boost your productivity even further, whether that's for personal projects or team collaborations, I highly recommend to uh, check out ClickUp. Link is in the description. It's free to get started. It's made a huge difference for me. All right, and that wraps up this one. So I showed you how you can set up your own Alfred AI spell fixer and potentially consider ClickUp to boost your productivity even further. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you're more into like technical tutorials and building AI applications because this is a this video is a little different from the typical videos that I make but if you're up for that and you're interested in coding make sure to uh, subscribe so you can follow along and then I'll hopefully see you in the next one